films that tell the fantastic history that has made the Pac-12 the Conference of Champions. The year, 1986. We Are the World by USA for Africa won the Grammy for Record of the Year. And the Oprah Winfrey Show made its national TV debut. On the gridiron, 1986 was a year of first for the Arizona State Sun Devils. Head coach John Cooper's squad won its first Pac-10 championship and made its first appearance in the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl, where they faced off against a Michigan team led by quarterback Jim Harbaugh. It was a season never to be forgotten, so let's relive it now in its original format, Run for the Roses, 1986 Arizona State football. Here's your host, Charlie Jones. the Devil House, home of college football's newest superpower, the 1986 Pac-10 champion Arizona State Sun Devil, led by National Coach of the Year, John Cooper. Valley of the Sun eagerly anticipates the 1986 football campaign. ASU will debut against Big Ten power Michigan State and the preseason Heisman favorite, Lorenzo White. Defensive coordinator Larry Marmee has superbly prepared his charges. The Spartans and Lorenzo White are to be given a vivid demonstration of what awaits future Sun Devil opponents. On the other side of the football, Tailback Daryl Harris outshines the heralded white, igniting a Sun Devil attack, which moves the football relentlessly, taking a 20 to 17 lead into the fourth quarter. It's a tensely contested struggle, and late in the game, a major test awaits Arizona State. A 34 yard field goal to try to tie it with 17 seconds to go. Here's the snap. It's on the tee. It's blocked. They blocked it. They blocked it. It's out of the end zone. Seven nights later, Harris is the focal point of an offensive explosion loosed on Southwest Conference power, SMU. Even more eye-catching is the performance of the Sun Devil defense. The talent-laden Mustangs are completely overwhelmed as ASU rolls to a 30 to nothing triumph. The college football world is put on alert. The guys from Tempe, Arizona are for real. Football axioms are inescapable. One is that championships are won with defense. In 1986, Arizona State provided unmistakable reinforcement of this mandate. A 
Another key ingredient is senior leadership. All-America and all back 10 Scott Stevens. Jim Reynosa, Skip McClendon, Danny Solomua, and All-Pac-10 Darren Willis were the inspirational leaders of a defense that ravaged Pac-10 opponents throughout the most important season in ASU's splendid football history. Greg Clark, Sean Patterson, Eric Allen, Anthony Parker, Robbie Boyd, Jeff Joseph, and Stacy Harvey will be called upon next year to carry on the legacy. And what a legacy it is. October the 4th, 1986, Pasadena, California. The Sun Devils attempt a first. Never before have they beaten storied UCLA, winners of three of the last four Rose Bowls. ASU knows that to have any chance of returning to this same arena on New Year's Day, they must capture this nationally televised showdown. From the opening whistle to the final gun, the Sun Devils are the more physical of the two Pac-10 giants. But will that be enough to carry the day? Rarely has ASU had much offensive success against the blue and gold. On this occasion, however, perseverance seems to be paying off. Determined not to be undone by mistake, the Sun Devils take advantage of two Kent Bostrom field goals for a 6-6 halftime deadlock. 30 minutes of the most intense kind of action looms ahead. In the second half, Jeff Van Raffors finds chinks in the Bruin armor. Big completions to Bruce Hill and Channing Williams present the Sun Devils with a marvelous opportunity. ASU capitalizes on the moment. Bruce Hill's touchdown appears to have monumental importance. Throughout the remainder of the contest, the Sun Devil defense is something to behold. UCLA's legendary come from behind tradition is left tattered and torn by a brilliant effort. The 16-9 win sends a clear message. The exultant Sun Devils have a return engagement in Pasadena on their mind. And they're going to be one tough bunch to stop. Varsity Days is presented by Mitsubishi Motors. Mitsubishi Motors invites you to find your own lane. Coliseum, a bomb is lost. The fallout from this detonation will be felt throughout the Pacific Coast. Contrasting with its breakthrough win against UCLA, Arizona State enters its 1986 meeting with USC full of confidence born of domination. The Sun Devils have won five of seven from the Trojans, and they've done it by consistently shutting down the Ballyhooed USC running game. 1986 is no exception. Once 
once again, the ASU defenders pursue their quarry relentlessly. And under such pressure, a breakdown by the opposition is inevitable. In its two Los Angeles appearances, the Sun Devils play the game the way it was drawn up on the chalkboard. ASU moves the football steadily and successfully with an absolute minimum of mistakes. The result, a 29-20 victory over the Trojans, a sweep of UCLA and USC in Los Angeles, an unprecedented achievement. Arizona State is the Rose Bowl favorite. Gaining the upper hand in the trench warfare along the line of scrimmage separates champions from also ranked. In 1986, ASU's all Arizona bred offensive line of Jim Warren, Todd Callis, Kevin Thomas, and first team All-Americas Randall McDaniel and Danny Villa provided just such superiority. Nicknamed the homeboys, this unit was the linchpin of an offense that averaged almost 33 points a game. Just as impressively, ASU gained more than 400 yards a contest, almost ideally divided between passing and rushing. Pacing the ground game was second team all-conference Darrell Harris, who gained just under 1,000 yards and carried on ASU's outstanding tailback tradition. Harris was complimented by Channing Williams, an excellent blocker and power runner. So complimentary were Harris and Williams that each scored a team-high nine touchdowns. Paul Day added yet another dimension to a running game that was so effective that the Jeff Van Rappors-led passing game became one of ASU's best ever. Able to choose from receivers such as Stein Koss, second team all-conference Jeff Gallimore, all-pack 10 Aaron Cox, and flanker Bruce Hill, Van Raffhorst became the most prolific passer in ASU history, surpassing the records of Dallas Cowboys star Danny White. Hill and Cox formed the most feared tandem of wide receivers in the West giving ASU the capacity to score from anywhere at any time. November 1st, 1986. The sixth ranked Washington Huskies clash with number seven, Arizona State. The Pac-10's perennial attendance leader draws another packed house of 70,000 to Sun Devil Stadium. To the winner, a virtual lock on the conference championship and the coveted prize that comes with it.
we better we we got a couple real close calls on uh, on when Jeff got hurt and got hit while he was passing out so third and third better tell him to be aware of that. Well the backside rush on the sprint out. He's got to keep coming, doesn't he? ASU's talented offense is at its proficient best, rolling up over 200 yards rushing against the nation's second-ranked rushing defense. Washington 34-21. The Pac-10 title in college football's ultimate reward is just 60 minutes away. And Thursday at 9 on Pac-12 Networks. The following week, ASU fans have just one thing on their mind. California is the opposition, but Scott Stevens' interception in the game's opening minutes flattens whatever resistance the Bears might offer. The 49 to nothing runaway caps the scintillating regular season in which the Sun Devils are crowned champions of the Pac-10. Ahead, a return trip to Pasadena, this time for the Rose Bowl. It is the culmination of a dream. Arizona State versus Big Ten champion Michigan in college football's prestige bowl game. The state of Arizona's first ever Rose Bowl appearance lures more than 40,000 Sun Devil fanatics, each anticipating a classic showdown. Perhaps unnerved by the enormous events surrounding them, the Sun Devils trail by 12 early in the contest. But this team has thrived on extraordinary effort, a quality which soon comes to the forefront. Daryl Harris will gain more than 100 yards on the day, and he spearheads a momentum-changing drive characterized by near-perfect play calling and execution. A moment to be cherished by Sun Devil fans everywhere 
ASU's inaugural Rose Bowl touchdown travels from the fingertips of MVP Jeff Van Raphorst into the supple hands of Bruce Hill. The gap narrows to two points. The momentum gathered late in the first half carries over into the early stages of the second. ASU's superior quickness begins to assert itself. Once again, arrow free football proves a Sun Devil ally, and the resulting combination is too much for Michigan. The lead belongs to Arizona State. Throughout this remarkable campaign, outstanding defense has been the foundation of Sun Devil success. On this first day of 1987, Arizona State's speed and intensity manifests itself in domination of the line of scrimmage. into desperate circumstances, the Wolverine offense slowly begins to disintegrate. As darkness descends on Pasadena, the inevitability of an ASU triumph becomes apparent to all. It is a sweet win indeed, the pinnacle of a phenomenal season. National Coach of the Year John Cooper leads Arizona State to victory in college football's most revered bowl game. The Sun Devils go 10-1-1, ranked fourth in the country. It is ASU's most unforgettable season. Stay tuned for more of the same. The Rose Bowl champion Sun Devils finished the season ranked number four in the final AP poll. Head coach John Cooper would leave for Ohio State after the 1987 season. Ten years after their first Rose Bowl appearance, quarterback Jake Plummer would lead the Sun Devils back to Pasadena, where the Sun Devils fell to Cooper's Buckeyes 20-17. We've hoped you've enjoyed our look back at the 1986 Arizona State season. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time on Varsity Days.